you are taking your religion from right and likewise the messenger the hadith of the messenger uh, a man is upon the religion of his friend so let him look at whom he befriends so this is not some innovation that we've invented in the 20th or 21st century but this is actually a prophetic teaching and it's a principle that the Sahaba and the Salaf understood and took directly from, from, the, from, from the revealed texts. That's the first thing. So the issue of, of looking at who you're taking not from, exactly as you said, there are many, many, uh, many, many people uh, appearing. Uh, we don't know anything about their background, what they're upon, who they befriend. You know, and sometimes even, like, like you saw the statement from Al-Barbahari, many people, they wait for a very long time. They mix, mingle, lie low, wait for the opportunity when they've got followers and people attached to them. Then they will start coming out with what they really want to come out with. Right? Even the examples I've given you earlier on. Al-Ma'rabi, for example. I'll give that example. He's a person, he's come. Uh, he's turned up in Yemen. Right, he's acquired some knowledge there. Then he's, you know, I done a few tapes, cassettes recorded with Sheikh Albani, rahimahullah, and then these get distributed. You know, he's refuted a few things here and there. And then once he's got that uh, acceptance, he's just waiting and lying low for the right time to put out his poison, which is what he started doing after 2001, 2002, you know. Yet before that, he was taken to be a really strong, you know, high-powered student of knowledge and whatever. So a believer is not stung from the same hole twice, like three times for some people, you know. Um, and, and so these principles that we're talking of, of you know, uh, look at who, it, who you're taking your, your religion from. You should know, you know, who they are, what their history is, what's the history of their da'wah, what they call to, uh, what, what do they have in terms of, uh, clarification you, know, you look at all these things you ask you ask around you ask people there's nothing wrong with this in terms of um, you know seeking religion because this religion this knowledge makes up your religion so just in the same way as for example if uh, for marriage you know you want you want to get someone uh, someone married you would investigate what is this person like what's his background what's his behavior what who does he mix with? Who's this? Whatever, because you want the best for your for your son or for your daughter, right? And the same with trade and business. You want to do trade and business with somebody, right? Do you? Who, how do you? You know, uh, is this person reliable? Is he trustworthy? Who has he done business with before? You're going to do all those things. Why then, when it comes to religion, you think, oh no, 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 everybody and anybody who comes to me with anything, yes, I, you know, I'll take opens the bligi nisab and opens this with anything. Why are you going to, you, know, you don't do that. You want to know who this person is, who his background is, who he's mixing with, who he took knowledge from, who he visits, who he sits with, who he goes and befriends, whatever, till you know exactly what this, what this individual is, is upon. And this behavior, of the, this, this is not, like I said, it's not bid'ah. This is something that the Salaf themselves, um, you know, uh, used to do. If I can find some uh, narrations, you know, and you you can you can test people in certain ways. It's not it's not it's not to, uh, totally prohibited. Um, yeah, page fifty-two by way of example. Here are some narrations. Uh, judging a man by way of his companionship. Um, First of all, the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Mar'u ala deeni khalilihi fa yanzur ahadukum man yukhali. We mentioned that already. A man is upon the religion of his friend, let him look at whom he befriends. And Ibn Mas'ud, he said, weigh the people or consider the people by their associates. A Muslim follows a Muslim and a fajir follows a fajir. A sinful person follows a sinful person. And... He also said, indeed, a man only walks with and accompanies the one whom he loves. 
or the one who is similar to him. And Abu Darda said, from the fiqh, from the understanding of a man is whom he walks with, whom he visits and enters upon, and whom he sits with. From the fiqh of a man to know this. Who shall I sit with and not sit with? Who shall I walk with and not walk with? Who shall I visit and not visit? This is from the fiqh of a man to know this. And um, Yahya bin Abi Kathir, who said Suleiman bin Dawood, al-Islam, he said, this is Prophet Suleiman, this is, do not judge upon anyone until you see who does he befriend. And also, uh, Musa bin Uqba al-Suri came to Baghdad, this man came to Baghdad, and so the people went to Imam Ahmed and said, oh, this, this, this man here is come to Baghdad. So Imam Ahmed said, Look at whose house he goes to, see where he goes to, and look at whom he basically stays with. Right? Then, then you know the reality of what this, what this man is. And um, I mean, there, are, there, are, there are many, many in, in, you know, narrations. Man satara anna bid'ata lam tukhfa alayna ulfatah. The one who conceals his innovation from us will not be able to conceal his friendship from us. Al-Awza'i. Many, many statements. The point being, the point being that um, you can know the reality of what a person is upon by way of his friendship, by way of his, by way of his allegiances, by way of his, by way of his attitude and position to those who are already known and established with a history of calling to the sunnah and who are known by the ulama and who... You know, who, who have a clear history. There's no dubiosity. You know, okay, this one, that one, that one. That we know that they are the, you know, the people of, of Sunnah Salafiyyah in this land and in that land and that. And you, you know very clearly, right? See how they are towards them. This also is from the way of the Salaf as well, right? Uh, what, what, is, what is your position? What is your attitude? What is your statement towards the people of the Sunnah in the land? The well-known, established people of the Sunnah, right? So to cut a long, you know, answer short, um, person has to follow this advice <clears throat> and look at whom they are taking their knowledge from and anyone who comes new you should give them time you know and see what their reality is you see many people coming and going you, you see these people this uh, what's his name Abu Taymiyyah al-Jirani man was a grave worshipper five six years ago in Yemen somewhere probably on his early 20s now he's ended up in Medina now he's out there doing you know uh, this is the fitna of, of social media and YouTube because it allows everyone to pretend that he's a scholar and that he's a, you know, and they throw themselves upon the people and the people, you know, uh, and they do it by way of, oh, we'll teach you this book and we'll teach you that book and we'll teach you this book, we'll give you a course and you'll this and you'll learn this and we'll uh, we give you a certificate and uh, people like those things, right? And then they'll fall for that and they don't, don't know anything about the background of this individual, what does he even know, uh, you know. So th this is the great, like you said, this is, this is the great danger of the modern era, um, that uh, uh, so many people thrust themselves upon other people and the average person gets, gets confused. So basically, the short answer is, uh, look at those who have precedence, look at those who uh, the scholars ha are known to the scholars, and have been spoken of favorably by the scholars. Look at the history. Look at the dawah. Look at you know. Always look at you know who has brought who is bringing clarity, right? That's why in history, why do you always hear the name of Imam Ahmed, right? The names of the scholars you hear, they weren't the only scholars. There were thousands and thousands of scholars amongst the Muslims, good scholars. But why do you only, why do you only hear Imam Ahmed, Imam Malik, you know, uh, Muhammad bin Sirin? You know, Abu Ubaid al Qasim bin Sallam. Well, why do you hear certain names that we always mention, Sufyan al Thawri? Why do you always hear? Well, because these are the scholars who actually clarified the Sunnah and refuted Bid'ah. Because they, they actually, they're, they're the ones who said, this is the path here, this is the path here, this is the path here. Right? They stood and they clarified what the path is. As a result of which, those who came after they knew what the path is. That's why the, their names are always, always mentioned. That's why we hear Ibn al Qayyim, Ibn al Taymiyyah. Right? Because they they clarified that's why their names have been have been made lofty because they are constantly mentioned, 
right? But there are thousands of other scholars, very righteous, God-fearing scholars with knowledge, you know, in hadith, whatever. But they didn't have the effort and the juhud that these scholars had in actually clarifying the sunnah and exposing bid'ah so that the deen of Allah can remain intact. That's why they are remembered and mentioned. Right? So in the same way, if you want to know in any place, any location, who is upon the truth, you say, okay, well, I want to know in this land who, who is clarifying the misguidance of the Rafida. Let's see, let's, see, let's, see, let's see our writings and works on Rafida, Sufiya, Takfiris, Ash'aris, whatever. Who, who are the ones who are clarifying? This? Where, where are these people? Right? You ask these questions so you know who are, who are the, the people of the Sunnah. Not just in claim, but in actual pra- practicality as well. Right? And you, you know, you, you see people, unfortunately, they claim to be Salafi, they claim to be on the Sunnah, and uh, never ever do they speak in a single trial or tribulation to support the truth, like, you know, uh, Adnan Arur, Al Ma'rabi, Al Halabi, Al Ramadani, Al Hajuri, totally silent, don't have anything to say. And the first time they find an opportunity, you know, to attack. Uh, the people who have made those clarifications, they'll find opportunity to attack and you don't find any speech from them about anyone else. Right? You, you see these things and you can see, hang on, there's something not right here. Do you understand? Right? So there's many, many, basically there's many, many ways and avenues, but in general, a person should be cautious in rushing to take knowledge from someone who he doesn't really know anything about. And you should stick to people who have a, a long, you know the people in this country who have a long history, you know, uh, Abu Talha rahimahullah, Abu Hakim, uh, Abu Khatija, you know, uh, you know, there's Abu Idris, Abdul Ilah, Waysa al Tawil, Hassan al Somali, and others, you know. They, they have a history going back to the 90s, right? And their affair is known, and they are known to the scholars, right? So go to them and ask them, what do you know of this person? What do you know of that person? What do you know of this person? And they will advise you. Right? But stick to the stick to those who are actually well known, you know, in in, in your land, and um, you know you will be safe in your religion, inshallah ta'ala. Time is Maghrib. Half past nine is the azan. Okay, so five minutes. Okay, we'll we'll end there, inshallah. If you need people need to make we'll do one thing like that before the prayer. So Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulill